What's up YouTube, it's Xander the Legend, here today with the dual decks, Zendikar versus Eldrazi. Yeah, let's take a look at this bad boy. Another brought to you early featured opening. The battle for Zendikar begins here. Contents are two 60 card decks, two deck boxes, ten creature tokens, two spin down life counters, a strategy insert, and a rules reference card. Uh... Can Zendikar resist this onslaught, or will the Eldrazi triumph? Let's take a look. Let's open this bad boy up. Sorry for how zoomed in our camera is right now. That's because we're going to be going over all the cards in this set and kind of seeing our two deck boxes. Pretty cool. So now this is where I'm going to need to help. I have a feeling this is an Eldrazi box, right? Because this is the Swamp. Yeah, this is a Swamp Mountain deck, so that's Eldrazi. And then this one right here is going to be the Zendikar. Because of the whole land. And I forget what these things are called, the whole pillars that are shaking into the ground. These are actually pretty cool looking deck boxes. Unfortunately, right from the get-go, I can tell you they have the exact same problem we've seen before. These are not going to hold sleeved cards at all. But it is going to be kind of nice to hold our decks for a temporary period of time. We have that rules reference card. This comes with about everything. It looks to be the traditional, and it is. So right into the keep file 13 pile. And we're going to get a really cool fold-out for Zendikar versus Eldrazi. This is going to talk about all the different cards in the Eldrazi deck, which we're going to go over here in just one second. And the Zendikar deck in our back is going to be, it's a, no, it's not really a poster. It just kind of talks about some different things. So let's go right in to the madness. The part everybody wants to see. Both of our different decks with our alternate art promos. And both of our dice. Actually, pretty good looking dice. They have that blue little tint to them. Red and green. Okay. I mean, I can dig it. Nothing super fancy, but we'll put those up out of the way. As always, we've got our handy dandy KMC Perfect Fit sleeves ready for a couple of these cards. If it's anything like the dual decks from other sets, we're really going to want to sleeve these immediately because they're actually be worth some money. This MSRP is for $19.99. And once we go over some of the cards, I'll explain why this is pretty much a must buy at that price. Uh, at least a one of. It kind of depends what you're wanting to do. Oblivion Sour, $6 uncolored for a 5-8. It's an Eldrazi. When you cast Oblivion Sower, target opponent exiles the top four cards of his or her library. Then you may put any number of land cards that player owns from exile onto the battlefield under control. Very, very interesting start there. The other premium foil promo card is the Avenger of Zendikar, 5 and double green for a 5-5. Five five. When it enters the battlefield, put a 0-1 Green plant creature token on the battlefield for each land you control. It also has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus one plus one counter on each plant creature you control. Now let me tell you, if this is in, I, I'm, I think this is in the new expansion, Battle for Zendikar, and if it is, landfall is going to be a thing, obviously, and it can make a couple other cards really go up in, va in value. With that being said, I am kind of more of a green player at heart. So let's take a look at the Zendikar before we take a look at the Eldrazi deck. Another rare right off the top here is going to be a Scoot Mob. Definitely seen these around. It was just reprinted in one of the Modern Masters, I believe. One green for 1-1. One, one. At the beginning of your upkeep, you control five or more lands. Put four plus one plus one counters on it. It gets really out of control real quick. Veteran War Leader. One uncolored, a green and a white for a star star. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control. You can tap another untapped ally you control and it gains your choice of first strike, vigilance, or trample until end of turn. This is going to be a card, I think. This is going to be a pretty good card. Seer Sundial. Four uncolored artifact has landfall. Whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control, you may pay two. If you do, draw a card. Nothing super great there, I don't feel like. Primal Command. This is one of our first money cards, I feel like. Uh, I think this is around three to five dollars right now. Three in color, double green. You can choose two of the following four. Target player gains seven life. Put target non-creature permanent on top of its owner's library. Target player shuffles his or her graveyard into his or her library. And search your library for a creature card, reveal it, and put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. This is something you see in Commander, I believe, 
not necessarily, uh, I don't know. it would be just interesting to see what else happens. And then we have a man land. This is also worth about three to four dollars. So we're up to eight to nine dollars right now. This is steering Wildwood. It enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it for green or white or for the one uncolored green and white. Until end of turn, it becomes a three, four green and white elemental creature with reach. And it's also still a land. Great card. Caravan Escort, one uncolored for a level up creature. You have to level up paying two uncolored. It's a 1-1, one, one, a 2-2, two, two, then a 5-5 five, five with first strike. Going to get a couple of those. A couple more level. We're going to have another level up card. Beast Breaker of Balaged, one uncolored and a green for a 2-2, two, two, a 4-4, four, four, and a 6-6 six, six with trample. He costs two uncolored and a green to level up. Frontier Guide, one uncolored and a green for a 1-1 one, one Elf Scout. For three uncolored and a green, you can search your library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Man, we have a lot of level up cards. Knight of the Cliffhaven, one uncolored and a white for a 2-2, two, two, a 2-3, two, or 4-4, four, four, flying and vigilance. Three uncolored to level it up. Stone Wark Puma, three uncolored for a 2-2 two, two, cat ally artifact creature. Artifacts could potentially be a thing, especially the, the non-colored cards. Daggerback Basilisk, Two uncolored and a green for a 2-2 of Death Touch. Seems pretty pretty decent value for that. Uh, Graze, Grazing Glade Heart. Two uncolored and a green for a 2-2. It has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may gain two life. Uh, I, I think this is new artwork. This is definitely a reprint of this card because I we play with it in uh, duels. Tajaru Archer. Two uncolored and a green for a 1-2 Elf Archer. Whenever the archer or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may have archer deal damage to target creature with flying equal to the number of allies you control. That'd be pretty cool if it said elves instead of allies, but maybe we'll have something like that in Battle for Zendikar. Alpha Guard Hound. Two uncolored and a white for a 2-2 two, two with flash. Uh, it enters the battlefield. Target creature gets plus zero, plus three until end of turn. So just some survivability. Nothing real quick on the damage there. Turn Timber Basilisk. One in color, double green for a 2-1 with death touch. Also has landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under control, you may have target creature block turn tumbler this turn this turn if able. Um, yeah, I mean, you can force something to fight it. That's pretty good. I hate that you have to spend three mana, wait a turn, and drop a land. Well, you could drop him before you play a land on turn three. Or sorry, it'd be turn four. Decent. I don't know. Moving right along... Gray Pelt Hunter, three uncolored and a green for a 2-2. Two, two. Trample, uh, whenever the hunter or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus one, plus one counter on the hunter. Going to have a couple of those in there. That makes sense. Jorga Bard, <laughs> it's an elf rogue bard. Three uncolored and a green for a 1-4. Whenever Jorga Bard or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may have ally creatures you control gain vigilance till end of turn. So obviously this deck is all about allies. Undo... Undo... Giant? I don't know. I probably butchered that. Let me know in the comments down below how you would say that. Three uncolored and a green for a 2-4. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap, and then shuffle your library. Uh, Cabra Vindicator. Three uncolored and a white for a 2-4, a 3-6, or a 4-8. Other creatures get plus one, plus one, or plus two, plus two. Wow, that's pretty good. I like this card. I mean, it's going to be late. I mean, you can get them to a level two pretty quick. Getting them level five plus is going to take some time. Uh, McKinney Griffin, three uncolored and a white for a 2-4 flying. Pretty plain Jane there. Wildheart Invoker, two uncolored, double green for a 4-3. For eight, we have an ability for this Elf Shaman. Target creature gets plus five, plus five, and gains trample till end of turn. We've seen that card before as well. Territorial Balath, four uncolored and a green for a 4-4 four fourth landfall. When a land enters the battlefield under control, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. We got two of those. An Explorer Scope, one uncolored, artifact equipment. Whenever equipped creature attacks, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield tapped. Uh, I mean, it's got a cheaper mana cost than Sword of the Animus, and Sword of the Animus is legendary, but I mean, I don't know. I think I'd be running Sword instead of that. Groundswell, one green, target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn, also landfall. If you had a land in the battlefield under control this turn, this creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. Eh, not too bad. Uncolored, we're getting an oust for one white sorcery. Put target creature into its owner's library. Second from the top, its controller gains three life. So a little bit of survivability there. Here, let me get some of these cards kind of straightened up. 
as we keep going. All right. So I'm bending this back card. It's just getting bent really quick here. Colony Heart Expedition, one uncolored and a green for an enchantment. It has landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a quest counter on the expedition, remove th three quest counters from it, and sacrifice it. Search your library for the two basic land cards, put them on the library on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. I don't know what to think about that. I mean, obviously it's landfall, but man. Haro, or Haro, <laughs> two and a green. I thought it was funny. Instant ability is additional cast to cast Haro. Sacrifice the land. Search your library for the two basic land cards. Put them on the battlefield and shuffle your library. Retreat to Kazandu. Two uncolored and a green. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you can choose one. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or you gain two life. Repel the darkness. It's two uncolored and a white. Tap up the two target creatures and draw a card. Sheer drop. Two uncolored and a white. Destroy target tap creature. It also has an awaken ability for... Awaken 3 ability, so for 5 and white, you can put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target land you control, and it becomes a 0-0 zero, zero elemental creature in addition. So, late game, you can still get some great advantage out of this. About time we see 2 of a card. We're going to see 2 Evolving Wilds as well. Really, in the dual decks, you should be seeing more than just 2 of a card. Uh, I, I remember the last ones, I swear they had 2 or 3 of some of the better cards you need. Great Pelt Refuge, enters the battlefield tapped, it enters the battlefield, you gain 1 life. Tap and add a green and white two mana pool. So it's uncommon. This is just like the, what would that be? Like Blossoming Sands, I believe, from Fate Reforged. Turn Timber Grove. It enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. You can tap it and add green to your mana pool. Going to have forests. That looks like a new artwork forest right there. These are some old reprinted ones. So at least, I'm saying what, that was full art right there. I think that'd be a pretty cool card. They said they're going to look amazing. That's probably one of the new lands. I haven't seen that before. Hey, I haven't seen that one before either. Pretty cool looking. Oh, well, I haven't seen any of these. I'd like a, if that was a full art one, that'd be pretty cool. Should have, and then at the very end here, we're going to have our tokens. We're getting five plant tokens, which are just a zero, one plant. And yeah, they're not double sided or anything. So a little bit towards the end back there, total of five rares in that, with one mythic being the alternate artwork Avenger of Zendikar. We still have not seen the current money card yet, which I'll be very glad to go over once we get into the Eldrazi. All right. I probably take the tokens off the back here real quick. Oh man, we got all sorts of cool different tokens for Eldrazi. We'll wait and go over them. First rare is going to be Magma. Three uncolored, double red for a 4-4. Four, four. It's an elemental creature. For one, you can sacrifice a non-land permanent. It deals one damage to target creature or player. Butcher of the Malakar. Five and a double green or double black for a 5-4 flying. Whenever the Butcher of Malakar or another creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. That seems pretty good. And it's a vampire. People love their vampires. It That Betrays. This card's currently $15 to $18. This pays for pretty much the entire dual deck and why a lot of people be buying this, uh, especially because it's I believe it's an alternate artwork as well. For 12 uncolored, you get an 11-11 with a Nihilator 2. When an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent, put that card on the battlefield under your control. Just a ridiculous card. Consume the Meek, also another really good $2, $3 card. Three uncolored, double black. Destroy each creature with converted mana cost three or less. They cannot be regenerated. And then our last rare we're going to get is Hellion Eruption. Five uncolored and a red. Sacrifice all creatures you control, then put that many 4-4 red Hellion creature tokens onto the battlefield. Well, it sure seems a lot like Descent of the Dragons, except for they don't fly. So, not sure how I feel about that. All right. Rune Servitor. He's been praying a million times between Modern Masters and Origins. Let's do it again. Two uncolored for a 2-2. When he dies, each player draws a card. Gonna have a couple of those. Bloodthorn Vampire, one uncolored and a black for a 1-1. One, one. If you sacrifice a creature, it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. This deck's gonna be all about sacrificing your creatures. I believe this is an alternate artwork, or it's a brand new card that should be in Battle for Zinna card. It's the four run of Slaughter. Green, or green, black, red. Wow, what am I on tonight? For a 3-2 with Devoid, this is a new mechanic. 
This card has no color. For one, target colorless creature gains haste until end of turn. People are saying this is going to be a new thing, especially with Ghostfire Blades, so you might want to watch out for Ghostfire Blades costs going up, especially if we see a lot more cards like this in Battle for Zendikar, because they will not have a color, so it will equip cheaper. Bloodright Invoker, two uncolored, and a black for 3-1. For eight, the card's ability, target player loses three life, and you gain three life. It's a Vampire Shaman. Pretty decent. We have another Devoid Creature, Dominator Drone here, two uncolored and a black for 3-2. This also has Ingest, which is a new mechanic. Whenever this creature deals damage to a player, that player exiles the top card of his or her library. When it enters the battlefield, if you control another colorless creature, each opponent loses two life. We're going to get a couple of those, which is actually pretty nice, but it is just a common. Torch Slinger, two uncolored and a red for a 2-2. It also has a kicker for just one uncolored and a red. And there's the battlefield. If it was kicked, it deals two damage to target creature. Pretty decent, except we're looking at five mana total to do it, so maybe not. Uh, Cadaver Imp, one uncolored, double black for one one flying. When it enters the battlefield, you may return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. Pretty nice, since we're going to be sacrificing a lot of creatures in this deck. Pawn of Olamog, one uncolored, double black for a 2-2. Two -two. It's a vampire shaman again. Whenever it or another non-token creature you control dies, you may put a 0-1 colorless Eldrazi spawn Creature token on the battlefield, it has sacrifice this, add one uncolored to your mana pool. We'll have a token for that a little bit later. Now this is a card I guarantee people would love to see back in standard. Vampire Nighthawk, one uncolored, double black for a 2-3, flying, death touch, and lifelink. Very crazy, one of the most overpowered three drops in the game, I feel like. Especially at an uncommon rarity. Heart, Stabber, Mosquito, three uncolored and a black for a 2-2, it also has a kicker of three. Flying, whenever it enters the battlefield, if it's kicked, destroy target creature. That thing is ridiculous. However, it is going to cost you a total of eight or seven mana to make that happen whenever it comes out. A Miracle's Hatcher, four uncolored and a red for a 3 3. It enters the battlefield, put three zero one colorless Eldrazi tokens. Man, for five mana, we're getting three of those tokens and a 3 3. That's a pretty decent common, and that's why we're getting three of those. Speaking of Ulamog, Ulamog's Crusher, 8 for an 8-8, eight, eight, Annihilator 2, and it attacks each turn if able. I believe he was an un... Was he always a common? I thought he was an uncommon for a little bit. Artisan of Kozilak, another dollar, two dollar card. It's a 9 uncolored for a 10-9. Whenever you cast it, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It also has Annihilator 2. Forked Bolt. Uh, one red, it deals two damage, divided as you choose among one or two target creatures and or players. That'd be nice to have back in standard. Mind Stones, two uncolored artifact, add one mana to your pool or you can sacrifice it and draw a card. It's basically like, oh wow, I'm drawing a blank. I keep wanting to think Lens or something, uh, Alchemist Vial, but this actually gives you mana so it's way better than Alchemist Vial. Smother, one uncolored and a black, instant ability, destroy target creature with converted mana cost three or less, it cannot be regenerated. Pretty good removal for just two mana. Marsh casualties, two or double black, kicker of three uncolored, creatures target controller creatures target player controls get minus one, minus one until end of turn. If it was kicked, those creatures get minus two until man, five mana for negative two, negative two is just not a good deal. I believe you could do there's a lot of other cards that could do that better. Induced despair, two uncolored and a black. As an additional cost to cast induced despair, reveal a creature card from your hand. Target creature gets minus X, minus X for in a turn where X is the revealed card's converted mana cost. Read the bones, just reprint in Origins, so we have all know this. Two uncolored and a black. Scry two, then draw two cards. You lose two life. Corpse hatch. Three uncolored, double black. Destroy target non-black creature, and then put two Eldrazi spawn tokens on the battlefield. Pretty decent. Gets us more tokens. And now our mana. Alchemum Refuge, refuge. <laughs> uh, enters battlefield, gain one life, enters tapped, it can be black or red, uncommon. Three of those, and Eldrazi Temple, I think this is still like a dollar as well. Tap and add a colorless, tap and add two colorless, spend this mana only to cast Eldrazi spells or activate abilities of colorless Eldrazi. Rocky Tar Pit. It enters the battlefield tapped, you can sacrifice it, search your library for a swamp or a mountain card, and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Is this like a fetch land? It's kind of like a fetch land. It, I mean, it is. It's a, it's a, it's a fetch land. And we got a couple of those. 
Some new art swamps. Pretty cool looking. Some mountains. Ooh, I like that one. That one's pretty cool too, especially like the, like the little glow, blue glow in there. And finally, our last tokens, Neldrazi spawn. We talked about those enough. A couple different ones, or three different ones, or actually four. I like the first one the best. It's pretty cool looking. And one Hellion, which is funny. It's most likely we're going to make several Hellions. Always getting that last card warped. Now, guys, once again, if you do like seeing these previews before the product comes out, make sure you let me know. Leave a comment down below. Hit that thumbs up button down there in the corner. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Make sure you do that. Leave me a comment and hit subscribe. This is the first time seeing the channel. Once again, I strongly recommend this dual deck. If you don't have some of these cards like I do, as it that betrays pretty much pays for the whole thing. And at the end of the day, who doesn't like having alternate artwork premium foil cards for Eldrazi's and Zendikar. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Keep playing Magic. And yeah, we got to go test these decks out. Later.